with Sens head coach Troy Mann. Uh, it's been, uh, feels like a long week in between games, coach. Uh, how have uh, things been going uh, since, uh, since Saturday? Yeah, I think it's been a real smooth week. Um, you know, obviously, except for the, the roster situation that seems like it's ever-changing on a day-to-day -day basis. But you know what? We had a good skills day Tuesday. I, I thought yesterday was one of the best practices of the year. Um, today, uh, maybe not as, as, as great as yesterday, but still uh, pretty good. We tried to touch on all our five-on-five -five topics that we thought we could uh, get better at from the, the Laval games, uh, specifically the Saturday games. So, touch, you know, worked on some power play today because, uh, you know, we're going to have new units again on Saturday. So, um, you know what, overall uh, it was good. And, uh, you know, the guys were upbeat, and uh, which they should be. And, um, you know, we tried to have two good skates before uh, ultimately flying tomorrow without ice. Yeah, um, no ice before the flight, and then uh, two o'clock games on both Saturday and Sunday. How does that kind of change the uh, the preparation? What might the schedule look like? Well, you know, you, you, it's a little bit worrisome that you go into a game on on Saturday without any type of morning skate. Anytime you take a bus somewhere or fly, you'd you'd love to have uh, some type of skate. But you know what? Uh, you know what? It is what it is, and that's the schedule. And nothing wrong with afternoon games. So. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll fly in there tomorrow, we'll hopefully have some good weather and uh, get ready for uh, what is a, a pretty good hockey club there in uh, Winnipeg. Uh, you've had, again, some time off. Has that helped on the injury front at all? What's the uh, lineup looking like these days? Well, you know, unfortunately with, uh, you know, Schertz and, and Luch uh, up, it's, it's still a work in progress to get guys back. But on, on the injury front, uh, certainly Rubens is available and going to play on Saturday, which is a positive from the left uh, side of the, the defense. And uh, Howie's back too. So, uh, you know, he's only played five games and he was a big signing for us this summer in terms of, you know, not only helping us, but uh, being a recall option for Ottawa. So, um, you know, what I know he's excited and, uh, you know, he's got a lot of family and friends coming in uh, for the weekend. And, uh, you know, what it just... I think he'll be a real good addition for us. You mentioned both Charche and Lucini. Uh, maybe let's talk about those guys a bit, getting some NHL time. Not the first time for, for Charche, first time in a while, and obviously a debut for Luch. Uh, how nice is it to see those two guys get rewarded for their hard work and, and, and their strong play? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, ultimately you want your prospects to eventually graduate to the NHL, but those are, are great stories as well, right? Because uh, whether you're coaching or, or playing, uh, the ultimate goal is to get to the National Hockey League. So. Uh, for Sharkey to get there, uh, you know, first time since 2018, after you know, quite frankly, a lot of adversity uh, with the, you know with the Toronto organization and some injuries in, in San Jose, and and uh, he's been a nice fit for us. And um, you know, last night's game was a little bit difficult to uh, to watch with the the Christmas party, as you know. But uh, you know, I thought Sharkey in his debut the other night looked very well and kept up with the pace. And um, you know, we looked at Lucha's shifts this morning and uh, looked like he did pretty well as well. And uh, actually actually got a little bit more ice time than Shards. So uh, that's a great field goal story in itself. You know, the fact that he uh, was traded here because of injury. Uh, ultimately, he, he was traded here because of the Crookshank injury because uh, we knew he was going to be lost and we were looking for a left winger. And he came in and, and obviously did a great job for us last year, earned himself an NHL deal. And, uh, you know, his, his play has tailored off a little bit here recently at this level, but uh, he's been a go-to guy all year. And, uh, you know what, he deserved it. And uh, as we tell the prospects, you know, they're you are uh, in a battle with uh, a number of players, whether it's Howerlick, whether it's Sharchi, whether it's Lucini. Uh, just because you're a draft pick and a prospect does not guarantee you a recall. You've got to earn those as well. And, um, you know, you're always uh, talking to management about different options and, and why this guy deserves it over another guy. But uh, to your point, uh, it was great to see. Uh, you touched on it that uh, the Manitoba Moose are a good team. What's kind of the keys to slowing them down? Well, you know what, they're looking really good on uh, on the offensive side of the puck and, uh, you know, their, their breakouts, you know, we watched the Calgary game uh, the other night where they beat Calgary 4-1 on Tuesday night and, um, you know, it's sometimes it's tough to evaluate because maybe Calgary wasn't as sharp as they would have liked, but, uh, you know what, Winnipeg was coming off a 7 nothing loss and anytime that happens, usually they, you, you get a really good effort, so uh, they look pretty strong on the breakouts and uh, real good job off the entry. Uh, heavy four check. Four checks looks very, very similar to ours. Uh, so that'll certainly be a key uh, for us in terms of breaking pucks out. But uh, uh, now it's just a matter of uh, diving into their uh, special teams here. And 
Uh, Belzy and Sexy are taking care of that today, so uh, you know we'll be ready and uh, we'll give a little bit of information to the players. It's always difficult with an early afternoon game because you don't want to overwhelm them with too much information, especially when you're playing a new team. Uh, you'd rather just focus on your game and what you need to do to be successful. But overall, we'll throw a, f a key, f you know, a few key five-on-five -five points at them and uh, go over their penalty kill and power play, and you know, and uh, hopefully go in there and uh, have a good effort on Saturday. Uh, with Puccini and Charte up, like you mentioned, how big of an opportunity is this for Ridley Gregg, especially at the center position? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's, uh, you know, Ridley uh, obviously coming off the concussion and the shoulder injury that he uh, sustained at the World Juniors. Um, and he's only played 12 games. And uh, he got off to a little bit of a slow start that got a, then got a, you know, went through a real nice stretch of hockey, uh, specifically with Crookshank and Sokolov on, on his wings. And uh, I, I liked his first game in Laval. He looked a little bit tired on the game two, which is probably understandable coming off uh, an injury. Uh, so they're going to have to be a go to line. You know, you look at our lineup for Saturday and Sunday, uh, you know, really Greg's line's going to have to, uh, not necessarily putting pressure on them, uh, but they're going to have to be our best line both games for us to get some points. And coming back to Manitoba where he played his junior hockey, I guess he's uh, ready to go, uh, as you'd say. Yeah, you know, Ridley, he's all, you know, he's a competitor and, and uh, a gamer, and that's why he's so well thought of within the organization from up top to our coaching staff here. So, um, you know what, uh, you know what, he's going to be a real good NHLer uh, when he gets there, and it's just a matter of getting uh, a repetition at this level, and uh, he needs to become a, a real go-to guy at both ends of the rink, which he has done in spurts here this year, but it just it's such a small sample size. So uh, we're, we're hoping that to, with a full week of practice here and, and being on the ice with Crooker and, and Soko uh, together again that, uh, you know what, we're looking for big things from them this weekend. And any uh, early thoughts on uh, goaltending plans this weekend? Yeah, Sogard's going to play Saturday, and then we'll, uh, much like last weekend, we'll reevaluate for Sunday. You know, there's three games left before the Christmas break, so uh, ideally Sogard would play Saturday and Wednesday against Wilkes-Barre here at home. But you know what? Uh, it's always important to evaluate workload and how the game plays out before you make a decision. And uh, much like uh, Ridley Gregg, Sogard needs repetition and he needs games. Uh, and for us to have any chance of uh, making playoffs here come middle of April, uh, he's going to have to lead us to a number of victories. So uh, good. Good start last Friday, and uh, I thought he was very sharp uh, in relief on Saturday, which was something we did not want to do. Uh, but overall, uh, you'll need to be good on Saturday with uh, a little bit of a depleted lineup, and uh, um, you know your goaltending on the road always has to be your best player. Thanks, coach. Okay, thanks, guys.